Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you are new to the channel, welcome. Now today we are gonna discuss a really hot topic on this channel, and that is minimalism with a sentimental child. I think every single person has some kind of sentimentality to them. You, myself, our kids, we all hold on to things for a certain reason. And I believe with minimalism, it's overcoming those beliefs, overcoming those thoughts. Why do we value these items? And I think a lot of it is based on how we are brought up in society, how the environment around us affects us. And for my own children, I have always started these beliefs really young so that as they grow, they aren't as sentimental. And believe me, I know that a lot of that is a personality type, I get that. But I do believe that by teaching these lessons and to paying more attention to this stuff and being intentional, you can help your children be less sentimental about things and help them overcome that need and that want to hold on to things so deeply. So before this intro gets any longer, I'm going to jump into my first tip. Every single child is going to want a gift. It doesn't matter how they are raised from day one. We live in a society where advertising is everywhere. And we learn very, very young that there are so many different options and it's all overwhelming and we want, 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 want. One thing that helps to overcome that is gifting your children with experiences over items. So offer alternatives. You might do this ahead of time or you might do it as you are trying to assist your child in getting rid of things. Maybe you think that they should get rid of all their Legos because they never touched them. You can tell them, hey, maybe if we get rid of this Lego set, we can actually go to Legoland. That way they are still getting the experience of the Legos, but they are doing it with an actual experience as opposed to the Legos as an item. So for my own children, I constantly remind them that there are children who may need or want their stuff more than they do. This does not work for all children, but it's kind of an important lesson just to teach them from day one. When you teach them about the way that other people live, how blessed they are, they're going to be less likely to want to hold on to stuff because people are naturally empathetic. I know there's a lot of bad in the world and we don't think that about people, but for the most part, people have a conscience and they want to do what's right. Sometimes they don't make that right choice, but that need, that desire to do what's right is there. So teaching your children very, very young that it's important to give back, that will grow with them throughout their lifetime and they will constantly hear that voice in their head that says, hey, you don't use this, you don't value it as much as you could, so let's give it to somebody else to value a little bit more. This is one that I know a lot of parents use when it comes to minimalism in children, but if your child has a specific item that they are attached to, like a lot of children want every single piece of art um, displayed. And that's okay, but what we wanna try to get them to do is say, hey, let's pick your favorite piece of art or two or three of your favorite pieces of art and let's hang that up in your room so you can see it every single day. If they have had an item since they were a baby and that's the only reason they are holding on to that item, it might work for them to say, let's take a picture of this item and keep it in the computer or keep it in your phone or whatever. I don't know how old your kids are, but basically let's remember this item in a different way as opposed to having it in the home taking up space. This is a huge one and probably the most important. So when I discuss with a parent that they have a child that will not get rid of stuff, my first thought is maybe you haven't appealed to their personality. So for some children, they're gonna have this desire, this need to be clean. For others, it's going to be to be responsible and for other children, it's going to be compassion. You have to decide what motivates your child just like figuring out what motivates you. Some children are gonna be really touched by the thought of giving a another child their things because some children are naturally empathetic. For another child, it might be really important for them to keep their room clean. It's just something that they grew up knowing that they wanted a clean space. And for that, you're gonna have to appeal to that. You're gonna have to tell them like, hey, it might be easier to keep your room clean if we consider getting rid of all of these items. 
Now, when it comes down to it, I know there are going to be children that are going to be extra difficult, the conversation is going to be extra difficult, and you are not going to get them to agree to get rid of stuff. So in this case, we need to focus more on the future. As opposed to thinking about what we can get rid of right now, let's start thinking about lessening the amount of stuff we bring in later. So for example, if your child does have a birthday coming up, Talk with family and let them know that this year you are interested in taking your children to a NASA Space Center or to Legoland or wherever. Let's focus on the experience versus the things. When it comes to Christmas, maybe instead of just buying a bunch of presents, you stick to kind of a theme like one thing to wear, one thing to read, one thing to watch, one thing to play with. That way you're really intentional about what you're bringing in and you can limit those arguments that you have about bringing stuff out. Now we sort of touched on this a little bit in the beginning, but I would highly recommend helping your child become involved in some kind of organization where they can learn to give back. The more time they spend practicing this trait of giving back, the more willing they are going to be to doing it. Plus, it's never a bad idea just to teach our kids to be good kids and to think outside of ourselves, so you cannot lose in this situation no matter what. Now this you might have to approach in a very specific way. I would say to go into your room and box up toys that your child hasn't played with in forever. Now I've heard this case so I know there are going to be a ton of kids that come to you and say, mom, what happened to that Barney toy that I, I got five years ago? Because kids have that kind of memory, they really hold on to things. And this is when you're going to take out the box and return that item to them and you're going to let them know, sweetie, I was just putting it away, keeping it in a special place for when you wanted it because otherwise they are going to feel betrayed. You have to be very careful with your wording because if you just put something away and then grab it when they want it, they're going to be thinking, why is she hiding my stuff? Why is she putting it away? Make sure that you're paying attention to the conversation in a way that tells them, I wanted to put this item in a special place so that I could return it to you whenever you asked for it. Now, if it has been a year and they haven't asked for it, then it's up to you to decide if you should get rid of it or not. Now, if you would like to help any of your fellow mothers with comments, with tips and suggestions, leave them down in the comment section below. And if you would like to see more videos in regards to minimalism in children, give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.